Believe it or not, it's coming up to 50 years, half a century, since the U.S. set its last land speed record. October 23, 1970, Gary Gablich drove the Blue Flame rocket car at Bonneville to a new record of 622 miles per hour through the mile and 630 through the kilometer. Which was its more significant record, by the way, 630, not 622. The Blue Flame was in fact the first car to officially break 1,000 kilometers per hour. I thought I'd make a little video series to recognize this achievement, kind of a 50th anniversary Blue Flame special. One of the key founding members of the project, Dick Keller, has sent me a whole treasure trove of material, documents, photos, inside information, and some cool film. So you don't want to miss this one. Okay, so to kick things off, we're going back to the beginning, to an ahead of its time rocket dragster that was the predecessor to the Blue Flame. It was called the X-1. It was the world's first liquid fuel rocket car. That's coming up. Before we get going, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And if you're already on board, thank you. Okay, let's roll. The Blue Flame story begins with these two guys, Dick Keller and Ray Dosman, researchers at the Illinois Institute of Technology in Chicago. It's 1964, and the land speed battle at Bonneville between Craig Breedlove and Art Arfons has been making headlines. So the speed record is a topic of conversation for Dick Keller and Ray Dosman during their lunch break. Being researchers, chemical engineers, they start talking about how you could build the perfect land speed car. A car that could blow even Art Arfons and Craig Breedlove's jet cars away. And they hit on the idea of using a rocket. A land speed car powered by a liquid fuel rocket. There had been solid fuel rocket cars before, notably the Opel Rack 1 and Rack 2 in Germany back in the late 1920s. But there'd never been a liquid fuel rocket car. What Dick and Ray had in mind would be the first. The key difference was that a liquid fuel rocket can be controlled. You could turn it on and off, throttle it up and down. You can't do that with a solid fuel rocket. You set off a solid fuel rocket, and it's blasting you along until it burns out. To test their idea, Dick Keller and Ray Dosman fabricated a tiny three-inch long rocket, a monopropellant rocket that ran on 90% concentrated hydrogen peroxide. It performed beautifully when they tested it out in late 1964, generating 25 pounds of thrust according to the bathroom scales they hooked it up to. With the data they collected, Dick and Ray wrote a paper, Development of a Land Speed Vehicle of Mach 1 Capability. They gave a presentation to some tire and chemical industry representatives hoping to get a sponsor to back the project and get the car built. The response was positive. Good work, guys. Cool rocket. But no sponsor stepped up. The general feedback was that Ray and Dick should build a smaller version of the car first to further test their ideas, and then maybe they might get a sponsor to build a full-sized land speed car. So that's what they did. Dick Keller recruited an old hot-rodding buddy of his, a guy named Pete Farnsworth, who had gone on to become a professional race car builder. Together, the three men formed a company, Reaction Dynamics and set to work building the world's first liquid-fuel rocket dragster. Here's the rocket, completed in April 1965. Weight, 56 pounds. Again, it's a monopropellant rocket, 
powered by the reaction of 90% concentrated hydrogen peroxide coming into contact with a silver mesh screen. But this baby is a hundred times more powerful than the first test rocket Dick and Ray built, that tiny three-incher. It puts out 2,500 pounds of thrust. With a maximum fuel load of 100 pounds, it's capable of five seconds of burn time. Here it is later in the year, mounted on a bare chassis, chained down. This is at the Great Lakes Dragway in Union Grove, Wisconsin. That's Dick Keller getting behind the wheel for static testing. Ray Dawsman looking on. Dick then takes the X-1 for low-speed testing and to demonstrate that it can be safely run on a drag strip. This is as far as Dick will go with the driving. With the car now having proven itself and ready for high speeds, a new driver is recruited, a guy named Chuck Suba, one of Dick Keller's and Pete Farnsworth's old hot-rodding buddies. That's Chuck there in the sunglasses and STP t-shirt, helping pack the chutes. Suba had studied mechanical engineering, he'd worked with jets in the Marine Corps, and now he's a professional driver. Here he is in a fire suit back at the Great Lakes Dragway in September 1966 to push the X-1 to higher speeds for the first time. The car's still bare chassis, so you can see Chuck pulling on the X-1's hand throttle at takeoff. It hits a top speed of 203 miles per hour. And that's using barely half the rocket's potential. Suba didn't dare use its full potential, the full five seconds of burn time, because he'd get going too fast to get safely stopped. It was also expensive. Concentrated hydrogen peroxide, not the 3% stuff, the antiseptic you can buy at the drugstore, but 90% concentrated, that cost $15 a gallon. So for the X-1 to make just one run, the Reaction Dynamics team was looking at an outlay of $100. Okay, now it's April 1967, and the X-1 is complete. The Pete Farnsworth aluminum body has the same basic configuration as the Lotus Ford that won the Indianapolis 500 in 1965. Total weight, dry, just 760 pounds. That's less than half of a top fuel dragster. Here are the specs. The Reaction Dynamics team starts taking the X-1 around to the drag strips to show what it can do. A rocket putting out 2,500 pounds of thrust on a car weighing 1,000 pounds, including fuel and driver, means that this thing has phenomenal acceleration. It's also immune to wheel spin, since all that power isn't going into turning the wheels. It's being blasted out the back as pure thrust. Invisible thrust, no flame, just super hot steam. So top fuel dragsters don't stand a chance against it. Neither do jet cars. They're thrust vehicles too, so no wheel spin but they weigh a whole lot more. We're talking more than a ton of dead weight for a jet engine versus 56 pounds for the X-1's rocket. The jet car guys figure this out right away, so there's no way they're going to run head-to-head -head against Chuck Suba in the X-1. In most of its appearances, the X-1 runs alone. In the few jet versus rocket races it competes in, the jet car gets a handicap of a second or more. The X-1 put in its best drag strip performance at Crown Point, Indiana in August 1967. Suba shut the rocket down before it hit the traps and it still got a recorded max speed of 229 miles per hour. Elapsed time through the quarter mile? 5.41 seconds, a record that would stand for more than four years, until Bill Frederick came along with his Courage of Australia rocket dragster. This attracts a sponsor for the car, an engine treatment company called Rislone. Going into 1968, the X-1 gets a second name, the Rislone Rocket. 
The X-1 made its final runs at the Oklahoma Dragway in September 1968. By this point, it's completed its job of attracting sponsors for a land speed rocket car project, outlined in a new and improved proposal that the Reaction Dynamics team has been sending out. The envisioned design of the car, very space age, has morphed into this. The rocket motor has also evolved. In a pitch to the natural gas industry, Dick Keller and the guys have come up with a new idea a bipropellant rocket using both hydrogen peroxide and liquid natural gas, LNG, a clean fuel that puts out no pollution. This addition of environmentally friendly natural gas will give the car its name, the Blue Flame. Chuck Suba by this time is no longer slated to be the driver. He was killed on October 13, 1968 on a drag strip in Illinois, racing a piston engine dragster. As for the X-1, it was sold to a businessman named Tony Fox, whose various enterprises included a company that made snow pony snowmobiles. Fox's neighbor, a young daredevil named Kyle Michelson, talked Fox into buying the rocket car from Reaction Dynamics and putting up the money to convert it into a rocket-powered snowmobile which Kai drove to a snowmobile record of 114.5 miles per hour. The machine has since been restored to its original X-1 rocket car configuration by Pete Farnsworth and currently sits in Pete's Wisconsin shop. <laughs>